Okay, my name is uh, Matt Gustafsson. I'm a musician and a composer. I work uh, in the fields of mainly jazz, musician, music or improvised music and chamber music of contemporary music. Uh, I have studied my masters in composition in Stockholm at the Royal Music Academy. Um, this is me. This is me and my bass. I'm also a member of um, the association Fylkingen, which is a, a collective space uh, for artists. It's artist run and it's a non profit uh, association for experimental music and art in all forms. Uh, it's been going on since 1933 and it's 90 year celebration this year. And it's uh, around about 300 members in the organization, more or less active during times now. Uh, but it's a, it's a music space where we, we work together, we help each other out organizing venues and concerts and we are running the bar, we are uh, booking the bands. <clears throat> we also have a producer and a technician who, who are employed by the association. We also run a, a record label, so you can uh, look us up and buy records. Uh, but the ma main work is made voluntarily and and we do the, the main work together. And Filkingen is also a part of the COST TOC program. Uh, in this talk, <coughs> I will uh, talk about um, how I use, uh, sim I call it symbolic meaning or uh, semantics in the process of music making um, as a foundation to, uh, to the compositions as an instigator or catalyst or inspiration to, to compose. Uh, and I will also talk about uh, and show examples of and play music for you so you can listen. And I will talk about how an artist can can work in their with with their art as as a part of the society to I call it re recuperate or make change or comment or uh, give a point of view uh, and also what does it mean it says sometimes I get the question what what is what is uh, what does your music mean? Does it mean anything? <laughs> I guess it's a, it's, it's a question about art. Uh, when you watch a painting, does it mean anything? It doesn't have to mean anything, but it can mean something, even though it's very abstract in its form. And, and I like to, in my composition work, uh, have this uh, underlying symbolic meanings. It could be politic, politics, it could be a comment on, on, some, uh, on the society of today. Um, and what do I mean with symbolic meaning? It's symbolic in the sense that it's, it is a construction uh, of meaning. It's a representation of, of content. Uh, which is highly personal for me, or very subjective. Uh, and I base my composition on, on a symbolic meaning, often. I do other kinds of music work as well, which, which is more maybe traditional. Uh, and how it all started, I was, I was uh, in my studies, I had, 
I was looking at my music from, from, from a distance and it struck me that my, my music it both sounded and looks in the notation in the score like medieval music. <laughs> uh, we were using no bar lines, uh, using no measures or uh, it's an it's a open um, construction and with room for interpretation and improvisation within the composed score. Uh, and I came across some texts describing uh, the, de the development of notation uh, during uh, the past thousand years when, when notation, notated music started in, in the medieval uh, and from up to now. And there has been uh, constructed uh, semantics or meaning in the, mu in the music making from the very beginning. Of course you have, you have um, uh, affections or feelings, but you have also constructed like oppressive inequality built into the musical system from the very beginning of the notated music. And it, it was very interesting to, to find that in a musicologist. I will talk later more about that. Uh, it can be a bit technical, musical technical, uh, if you're not uh, a trained musician or used to music in this way. But to simplify, in, in Western music and tradition, there has been a, um, ideas about emotional effects, and you know, the the most um, obvious one is the major chord and the major scale, which is a happy mode, and you have the minor as a sad feeling, a sad mode, and you built the music around that two two parts of the diverse of major and minor, and and that's quite it's quite. Uh, accepted as a, as, a, as a foundation of music and we understand and listen to music based on, on, on those uh, premises, both in, in contemporary music or, or popular music, folk music. We have those major and minor diversities. Um, but historically, we had have um, we have had uh, other kinds of uh, effects uh, used as a, comp a, a compos composition tool to underline under certain emotions and feelings, and uh, and especially in uh, or one example is during the Baroque era, there were certain emotions connected to, to a certain musical interval, which uh, supposed to, to uh, affect the, the listener to, to categorize or to, to enlighten a, cat, uh, a character in an opera, for instance. Uh, and these effects were also it comes from the philosophy of the time, where where the philosopher Descartes he had a, he had developed this uh, this philosophy of that of affects in admiration and love, hate, desire and joy, and that uh, that were represented into the music of certain intervals were like the, the perfect fourth interval, you know, do, re, mi, fa, do, fa, supposed to indicate joy or pride or glory, while a small interval, like da, 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 that was supposed to, to indicate um, sorrow or pain or grief. And then you have uh, the famous tritone, the diabolos in musica, 
the devil interval, <laughs> which, um, which uh, used to, I think it's, it's, it's a myth, <laughs> but also it used to, to represent like horror or the devilness. And it's used today by in very much in heavy metal music and, and death metal. If you're into that kind of music, um, the point is that music can be filled with all kinds of uh, meaning or, or subjectively uh, speaking of effects, affects, emotions, and feelings. Uh, but we can also, of course, understand music as only its only frequencies stacked together uh, in maybe an order or a harmony, and it makes uh, it doesn't have to make any sense at all. If you, unlike most in in the 1900s, in the post. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, in the 1900s, the, uh, the composers, they were talking about music for m the music's own sake. They didn't, they didn't uh, want to give any like, meaning into the music. Uh, and they, like Edgar Barres or John Cage, talk about just, it's just organized sound. It's, uh, it doesn't have any symbolic value or uh, and uh, also I read about uh, Wittgenstein, the philosopher. Uh, he, he had said this, to understand a musical theme is simply to understand that musical theme, not to understand some external reality that the musical theme represents. So we have these two, two different uh, angles of music and with the meaning or emotions, the effects, the historical perspective and the postmodern way of thinking that music is, is just organized sound. Uh, and when I've been reading about this, I've, I'm gonna show three examples of, of uh, of semantics or symbolic meanings or interpretations in music. And um, as I told you about them during uh, times, there have been a lots, of, uh, lots of ways of, of loading, the, loading the music with, with a kind of meaning or agenda to, to show effects. And the musicologist uh, I found Leo Treitler. I don't really know much about him. I read his article about about the Gregorian chant, you know, in in church, were develop, uh, developed as in um, in the Notre Dame church, in the, the school of Notre Dame. There were a lot of composers of medieval music in the church. Uh, developing the the way of composing and and uh, notate music in a way that was kind of new, and and Treitler found that the purpose was to enforce masculinity and virtues and rationality, and to dissociate the music from the earlier easier plain chant from the, from the Mediterranean, from, had been used ar ar around the whole Mediterranean area, which was associated with more flourishness and ornaments and agility, more feminine in a way. So the construction of the Gregorian chants were to opposite the, the earlier music, the plain chant. And those ornaments could be still found in, 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 in the Arabic music and in the Byzantine or the Orthodox music. Uh, 
And I read about Edward Said, as you know, you know him in the Orientalism, that he claims that the construction of the Western culture is to, to, to leverage against the Eastern and to, to enforce the Western culture and opposite of the Eastern culture. So this, um, this way of constructing the, 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 the way to compose music developed from that Gregorian, the construction of the Gregorian chant into uh, the, the, in the medieval times was maybe <laughs> uh, a fundamental reason why still inequality in music lingers. It's, it's built into the system in a way. And another musicologist, uh, Susan McClary, she wrote the book uh, Feminine Endings, uh, where she claims that, uh, that uh, music had later on in the music history of musicologists and composers been constructed as as a way of uh, promoting the masculine, the, the strength and the virtuous uh, rationality, and that uh, to, to take, <laughs> take opposite from, from like the feminine. And women had literally also, it's not only by constructing the music, composing, it, they had also literally been left out uh, from musical training and from practice uh, and from history writings about, uh, and the music itself was uh, as coded as preferringly masculine, strong. Uh, and in the book uh, she talks about the cadenza in the, in, the, in the contemporary or the classical music as the, the final ending of a music piece to be strong or weak. Uh, you can end a piece the masculine way or you can end it the feminine way. Uh, that was what the composer and the musicologist analyzed the music and she, she of course claims, but there ain't no feminine endings. So music ends. <laughs> but the construction of the masculine and the feminine had uh, lived through all, from the medieval through, through the um, decades and centuries up till, up till now. And another example I will give you, it's, um, it's uh, from a jazz uh, player, uh, a piano player. He's called, his name V.J. Iyer. And he wrote this article of the analysis of John Coltrane's piece, Giant Steps, which is a very difficult piece to play. It's hard. The, the composition is very, it's very fast and it's complicated. But it's not supposed to be like theoretical or technical masterpiece. He listened to the recordings of the studio, rec the, the studio recordings in between the sessions where the musicians talked within themselves and, they, the, and analyzed that and, and giant steps were composed to, to symbolize the black struggle, the effort of the black people to take it into the jazz music. And of course, you have several other examples of interpretations, meanings, or symbolism, agendas in music. Uh, Bach was a very religious person. He, he made his composition to, to show the divine glory. Uh, and Wagner, you have, he, he built in, in his anti- Semitism into the operas, and you have Chopin's Raindrops, which is much uh, 
not so politically. politically. So to conclude, you can either have these uh, symbolic meanings uh, underlying the, 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 the music, or you can have this postmodern way of thinking the music is just organized sound. And in my music, uh, as a musician and improviser, I use symbolic, I, I like to use the, the, this uh, symbolic meaning and just to, to catal as a catalyst of the music making, to make me start composing. And, uh, and I'm not an historian, I'm not a, I'm not a musicologist, I'm not a, uh, a researcher in that way, I'm an artist. So I, I use these, uh, these thoughts just to make my music, to make my art. Uh, and I think it's very interesting for me to, to show that just as an artist. Uh, I'm going <coughs> to scroll down. So one, one technique I use, it's, uh, it's from the, uh, it's, uh, the, uh, the 12 tone technique. It was the, it's, a, it's a composition technique. It's not a genre or style. It can be used in any kind of style. But you have in the Western music system, you have 12 uh, semitones, the, like the black and the white keys of the piano. And the technique of the 12 tone is that you, you should use every 12 tones before you can use them again. And you may make a series of, of melodies or themes during, with that technique. And, and, uh, and Schoenberg was one of the, the great composer, or great, he was one of the composer using this technique. And, and Schoenberg's method is analogous to the society in which he emphasized on the group and the integration of the individual in the group. So each, each of the 12 notes, it's, uh, um, symbolize yeah, people in the civilization. So I, I took uh, inspiration to that and use the 12 tone technique as a, as a base to, to my composition of, to bring inclusion, diversity, and mirroring the pluralism in the society because, and the diversity to show and, and therefore, this meaning of, of uh, integration or, or is, is uh, a part of, of the final musical piece. So now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play you a, a piece I wrote for harp. And you, this, is the, this is the score. And it sounds like this. Thank you. 
So this was only uh, the, the beginning of the piece. Uh, it's, uh, it continues and develops. Uh, the, the, the name of the piece is Villrådigheten. Uh, it's hard to translate to English, but unwillfulness, maybe it's a made up word, or hesit hesitance. Like when, during the time of the composition, I was very hesitant to the development of, of the state of Sweden. Uh, uh, where, uh, and like Donald Trump were elected and there were riots in the suburbs of Stockholm and Sweden discarded the, the, the migration laws and became a, a closed, uh, unwelcoming country. And, and I was very struck by the, the development of, in the society and hesitant to, to that. And, I want, and this, um, this piece is, if, if, if you want to, you, it, the hesitant of, of the, the, the musician, the player. Uh, the, struggle of the, the struggle of the piece and the hesitance of, of the, the actual music. And the 12 tone technique is very difficult to play on a harp because the, you have the pedals and you have the strings and you have to, yeah, so th that made it very, very hard as well to play. Uh, I'm gonna continue uh, while I do this. Uh, I got in the inspiration of, from a book I read from Guy Debord. Uh, society of the spectacle, where you, where you, as, as the book, I haven't uh, taken in all of the book. It's a, it's a poetical uh, comment to the, the, the society, and it's a Marxist way of, way of uh, playing, playing a role in the society, where. The, the society is a reflection of the reality as a spectacle. And, and you play the role, and it's, uh, it's a role play where, where we are the citizens, the actors. Uh, and it, um, yeah, the book is raised questions about why, and despite of the progress economically, growth and increased equality, why are we still bound with conditions we can't control? We are bound by our labor and we are forced uh, to participate in the society in some way. But this, the Boer's uh, thoughts about being an actor in the, in the spectacle uh, could be a way to uh, recuperate or, or change the society in another way. Uh, and I got inspired by this uh, to bringing in the, the, this symbolic meaning in the composition process to, to, to make change with art and through art as, an, as, a, as a tool. Uh, I should see. I talk about. Uh, I was thinking about three ways of uh, to perform a spectacle. I can, as an artist, I I do these uh, compositions with the built-in underlying meaning to the music, and I I can. On the concert, I can explain it to the audience or I can write it in the program. I can uh, make the audience uh, get thoughts into the audience mind. Uh, or I could just leave it hanging. I don't, sometimes I don't need to explain the, the things. Or I can also Uh, I can also do the uh, actual method of, I messed up this, uh, <laughs> the, the turn. 
Yeah, I can, as a composer, I can do the art piece and build in the meanings of symbolism, and I can be open and direct the audience and, and tell them how I, how I did the music, or I could just leave, leave it hanging. I don't need to explain it. But for me, it's important that it, their, the music is based on, on, on my values. Uh, and we're going to listen to another piece. Uh, I, made the, I made a composition for a big band in Sweden. It's a jazz orchestra. And I wanted to comment of, of uh, Bertolt Brecht's uh, quote. Uh, he said during the, the um, World War II, uh, he said that he wrote a poem with this line. What kind of times are these when to talk about trees is almost a crime because it implies silence about so many horrors? Uh, and I wanted to make a, a musical piece based upon trees because we need, it's important to talk about trees in, in a way. We need more trees in the world. We need, we need to stop cutting down the Amazon and we need uh, the, the trees to, to take care of the CO2 and we need the trees for, for shade to cool down uh, people living in, in, in warm places. So this composition is made to represent trees in, in, in a flipped way. The, 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 the composition is so I flip the trees over. So in the score, we have a, this picture so the musicians can watch what they play. They have also the notated score and the trees are in the score. And it's, we're going to listen to a, the beginning of it and see if you... It's 15 minutes long, so let's see how long we listen to it.
So this was the introduction of the piece. It's, uh, it's um, a composed music and improvised music and, and the, mu the saxophone player was improvising but the others were playing the, the score. And, and there was a drone lying, that was the, 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 the trunk of the, of the tree underlying. So this composition goes on for 10 min more minutes. And it's uh, this, this symbolization of, of, we need to talk more about trees. <laughs> it was a short message. Uh, okay, so another, another um, example of uh, composing or making art it's when you do a public installation or of some kind. Uh, and when, when, you are, when, you are, when you are on, you have the opportunity to stand on a scene or make, a, make an, an installation or a public, uh, public installation. As an artist, you have the opportunity to, to, to say something, to comment the, 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 the the, the world that you see and give your point of view uh, and that's important for, for the artist. I believe artists should take advantage of that opportunity when, when <laughs> being able to, to address the audience or the society to make a statement. If you, if you, if you have the opportunity, why not? Uh, so in uh, in 2017, uh, in Sweden, there was uh, a group of youngsters from Afghanistan. They were demonstrating against uh, the... Um, see. They were demonstrating against the government's uh, decision to decline residence permits and, and de deportations of minors. And the demonstrations took place in, in the Citizen Square in the middle of Stockholm and outside of the Citizen's House. Uh, and this was at a time where the Swedish, the Taliban re re hadn't regained their power yet. So Sweden authorities uh, thought that it was safe for them to go home so they were they were uh, uh, deport uh, supposed to deport these young people mostly alone alone coming to sweden um, and two years later i got uh, the opportunity or the commission to to make uh, to make uh, a composition about uh, of of the bells of the citizen uh, house uh, and uh, the, the 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 bells uh, I'm going to show you it, it looks like this you can't see the house but there are six six bells and made of two chords, two, two major chords, so it's a happy, happy, happy tuned bells. But the middle, the middle bell is uh, the, in the pitch of A, which I used to be a continuous uh, repeating uh, bell toll through the piece uh, to symbolize the border, the borderline. Uh, and the other bells uh, were I made melodies uh, like cascading melodies uh, which symbolizing the, uh, the, the crossing of the border. And it's uh, all in major, so successfully crossings. <laughs> but uh, I think they, the, the demonstrate the, the kids, I think they changed some very important laws in Sweden, and nowadays I think they they can stay. But I didn't, 
I, I didn't make this change. They, I, I think they made the change by themselves. But I did a comment on this, and in my composition, uh, the city, the municipality of the city is ringing these bells to rem as a reminder of the the government's abuse of these uh, these kids, these youth, uh, and and it, the title is uh, "Tillfälligheter of of sitt slag." It's um, it's an allegory of of temp temporary citizenships and uh, decline of, of the, the, the residence permits. Uh, and it sounds like this. Okay, so it's very short, but it, it rings every day at noon. So people crossing, they, they don't know the meaning of, of, the, the, of the piece. Uh, I know the meaning of the piece, and no, you know the meaning of the piece. So you know that every day the Stockholm city is ringing for those migrants and remembering the day. Uh, I, have it I have it a piano version of also but I think I skip it uh, okay to end this uh, I will have <laughs> I will raise the when doing something publicly and maybe provocative or make a statement you as an artist you always take the risk of provoking the wrong wrong people or making taking stand from uh, and provoking and the risk of the art piece being taken down. Uh, so these are, these are four examples of Swedish artists who, uh, who have made statements. Uh, two of them were taken down. I, if you can guess the two. But the, the left one, on the left uh, corner, it's, um, it's actually from the metro station in the, in, uh, the, the, the Bourgeois metro station in, in Stockholm. And of course, the melodies uh, are carved in, if you can see. Uh, there are some musical notes. And it's uh, the International. This, so, doing the melody of the bourgeois train station of the international. And Carolina Falco, she's uh, making big uh, mural paintings, uh, often uh, with the shapes of the, the uh, very provocative. The, the one up on the right where, of course, taken down too early. It was too provocative from the neighbors, said, oh, we have to see this every day. Uh, and, the, and the one in the left bottom was made on a school, and they didn't want to have women genitals in their school, so it's from Josephine's, uh, nearby Josephine's uh, hometown in Nyköping. Uh, and Lars Wilks, he made uh, these uh, sculptures of driftwood, which are still around, but Lars Wilks is no more around. So, as an artist, how can an artist uh, doing their work and contribute to the progress of the society? By acting, uh, as I to uh, told you earlier, you can, you can take the stand and you can make art with, a, with some values or meaning, 
uh, or you can, as a, as a member of the society, do art to change uh, the society in any direction. Or, uh, so this is just some thoughts. Maybe we can discuss them later. So I would say thank you.